Welcome to another Gem Talk. I'm Michael Valley Tutti, graduate gemologist, and I want to talk to you about coral. You know, I've sold a lot of coral uh, in my day on television, also here on my um, website, and I hope to do it again uh, now that I'll be, I'm on HSN and all the other great shopping channels that I appear on, like TSC and in Australia. Well, anyway, coral is a lovely gemstone, and first of all, it is uh, in my opinion, in the opinion of a lot of scientists, it, it's the, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, uh, gemstone known to mankind. Because back when, before men started gathering rocks and fashioning them into gems, uh, we would go into the uh, ocean. And, and coral reefs are found very close to the shore. Many of them are. And when you go in there finding food, what would you find? You'd find clams and shells, right? We'd open them up to, to eat what, what was inside. We'd find a little pearl. We would keep that, right? And then with the coral reefs there, we would look at things and say, oh, this is red, this is blue, this is very attractive. And what do you do when you find something attractive? You, you pick it up. So they would pick it up, bring it on shore, and it would dry out, and then they would start to play with it. And the first pieces of jewelry were made with that because it was easy. It was like a something that happened while they were searching and gathering food. So it was natural for them to do this. Now, we know this also because in ancient Egyptian tombs, which, which are on display, by the way, uh, at the Louvre Museum in Paris. There's jewelry on display that's been carbon dated to 5,000 BC. So that's about 7,000 years old. So we know that this jewelry uh, that's made with coral and also turquoise is some of the most ancient stones used by man, predating diamonds, believe it or not, by about 5,000 years. Now, what is a coral? It's, uh, you know, a GIA... They teach us about coral, but there's not big, huge studies uh, uh, done on it. But I will tell you what I do know about it. Corals are basically a marine invertebrate. Uh, they're within the class of, and I'm not even going to uh, try to pronounce it, Anthosa and Phylum Crideria. It's funny that in, uh, uh, in science there's all these very, very fancy and hard names. And basically what it is is that they are an invertebrate. They are a small almost microscopic marine life, and they live in colonies of polyps. And basically what happens is that one generation builds on top of another generation. It's almost like a growing tree. And that's exactly what it is when you find coral. It's like you're, you're getting all the generations of what's lived before. Most coral in the oceans is dead. It's no longer alive, though it is colorful. Some of it is alive. The, the stuff that's alive is soft to the touch. That no one harvests. It's always the hard coral, the coral that's fallen to the ground and all that, or you know, in, in the bottom of the ocean. That's usually what they harvest. There's all different types of corals. I mean, there's much more that I can go into. Really, you would need a marine biologist to talk about all the corals and the different varieties that there are. Most of what we would use is like stock corals, looks like stocks. And here's a picture that I took at the Hong Kong show. So this is kind of what you would see there at the Hong Kong show. There's also brain coral, and it looks like brains. It, it, it's kind of massive, and it, it's got all these veins going through it. That's not often used in jewelry. Usually, it's stock or stem coral. Coral only forms, of course, in warm water. So the main areas of coral for harvesting that I'm familiar with would be off the coast of Italy and Sardinia. That's where you get that wonderful, beautiful red coral. And that coral is very expensive because that coral is not color treated in any way whatsoever. And it's one of the hardest corals out there. Uh, it's a very, very beautiful coral. Then, of course, you would go to the South China Sea and around the Indian Ocean. You get very different types of coral there, like the bamboo corals. They're much more plentiful, uh, much more affordable. And then, of course, you can get to rare varieties like the blue coral. Here, why don't I show you on my, on my pad here to show you what I'm talking about. This is the blue coral. Now, blue coral is not treated. Blue coral is Heliopora cordillaria. And I haven't even said that right, but this, of course, is almost like a brain style of coral. Do you see what I mean here? And it's beautiful. This undergoes no treatment whatsoever. They are no longer harvesting this, from my knowledge. And this, of course, comes from the edges of the Great Barrier Reef uh, in, in the South Pacific. Then, of course, the coral that I just mentioned that comes from Italy, Sardinia, is this coral right here. This is one of the hardest corals you can find. And this coral is expensive because it's not color treated. So this undergoes no enhancement of color whatsoever. The color is natural through and through. This type of coral here is also natural and, and not color treated. But as you can see here, as I quickly manipulate this, is that this coral right over here has a white stem or white center. 
So what changed the color is as it grew, depending on what it ate and its surrounding conditions, change the color of the coral. There is also the natural white coral that you're seeing here. Now all the coral is natural, but these particular varieties here that I'm showing you, these are not color treated. This is also sponge coral here. They call it sponge coral because it's very spongy. This is a little bit more delicate. I can break this in my hands if I really, really, really wanted to. So what they will do with this is they will stabilize it. They'll impregnate it with a polymer just to make it a little bit tougher. But other than that, the color is natural. Though this will accept dyeing, the color is essentially natural. Then we get to the bamboo coral. This bamboo coral here, this is coral that's been dyed. Now, sometimes even this coral here, which often is not dyed, you see how this one has little spots of colors? They will take this coral and they will even out the tone by dyeing it. Dyeing is one of the earliest treatments known to coral and it's done to stabilize the color and to make the color very uniform because when a customer buys a coral necklace he or she wants everything to be as close to the same color as is humanly possible and because we're dealing with an organic we often have to dye it. We have no other choice to even out the color. The one treatment that is done to all coral is bleaching. Why? It's not what people think to change the color. Do you know why coral is really bleached? Because if it doesn't, it smells. Coral smells, if you go into the ocean, you take a piece of coral, even the coral that you find on the beach that's washed up, just take that coral into your hotel room, put it on the counter, come back in the morning and tell me what your hotel room smells like. It smells like dead fish. That's true. So what they have to do is they bleach it to deodorize it. That is what coral has to be deodorized. Trust me. You go to the water, you take coral, put it out there in the sun a couple of days, trust me, you won't be able to get back in your car with that smell. You need to deodorize it. So that is the real reason why coral is bleached, is to remove all the odors. Coral, because it comes in different sizes and different shapes, we can do just about anything with this. So uh, we're not limited like we are to some, some gemstones, like the mineral gemstones, like some of the garnet and the tanzanites that were really relegated to what is found in the ground, to what we can offer you as a designer. These are so big sometimes that, well, I can make beads. I can make necklaces out of this. I can make a big, big pendant. I can carve it. I can do just about anything. And I think this is one of the reasons that coral has maintained its popularity throughout the ages because really it's only limited to our imagination. So this is something why I think coral has endured and will continue to endure. Now, these stones are part of what we call the organic group of gems. And that simply means that it didn't come from the ground like a mineral. It once was alive. So amber was once tree sap, believe it or not, 65 million years ago and it fossilized and we know that story. These were once alive. This was once alive. So this is basically the shell or the remnants of what once was a living um, colony of coral that naturally dies off. It has nothing to do with man. Coral have been living and dying since the beginning of time because it's natural for all life on the planet to go through that cycle, inclu including us humans. So this is what coral is. So this is why we find this hard coral in the ocean. It's a remnant of what was once alive. So anytime that you have anything that was a, an organic gemstone, the only thing that can really, really hurt it is chemicals because chemicals attack. Just like you don't want to put a harsh chemical on your skin. You know what that's going to do to you? It's the same thing that'll do to a coral. So when you own coral jewelry to clean it, simple rule, very simple, S warm soapy water. If it's mild enough that you would wash your hands with it, then it's mild enough for you to, to, to clean your jewelry if it's set with coral. The same thing will apply to pearls or amylite, anything organic. So that's how you clean it. Now, as far as dyeing is, is concerned, dyeing when they dye coral is relatively stable. And again, it's something that is done to make more coral available and to even out the color. If we had to stick to coral that was 100% not dyed, in any way whatsoever, ever, even to even out the color, the prices of coral would be 10 to 20 times more of what it is today because there would be such little of it left because that's a very, very small alley. So what the treatments do, it, it allows more coral to be used, which is good. That means that they have to harvest less of it and do less damage out there. Uh, coral is a beautiful, beautiful stone. It's affordable. 
it's really one of the few things that I can offer you, because I, I just did a show here on coral, um, where I can give you big earrings, beaded necklace, beaded bracelet, charm, ring, the whole nine yards in one stone. You couldn't do that with diamonds. I couldn't give you beaded diamonds, to think of it, or even an emeralds. But with coral, I can give you all of that. I've even sold coral carved in cameos. So it is the one stone that anything that you can think of can be offered. Now, most coral is going to be offered to you in white. Sometimes you'll have it in black. This is natural blue, very, very rare. And it's usually going to be shades of the red category. So it's going to be either a deep red, the Italians call it, or also scudo, which means dark red, or it's going to be a pink or a salmon color. But it's basically most of the coral is tones on your reddish. So, you know, if you take a look at the, uh, the scale of color, it's mostly at the higher end, which is your oranges and your red. That's kind of where most coral lives when it comes to color. So coral is great. Um, it's relatively affordable, which I really, really love. You know, you can spend $100 or $200 and get yourself a lot in coral jewelry. Um, it's, it's a fantastic thing to own. Women have been loving it, and men, believe it or not, especially during the times of Egypt. Men wore a lot of coral back then. Uh, since the dawn of time, it will always be a favorite among human beings because, you know, let's face it, we love the ocean. I mean, aren't you the happiest when you're walking by the shore and you see a shell, you always pick it up, and that's really what coral is. It's, it's a part of nature and a part of something that we love, and I'm very proud to offer it. And when I do have sales on coral, I hope you take advantage of it. Or if you see me on a shopping channel and you see coral jewelry for sale, please pick it up. Uh, it's lovely, and it's something that I think everybody should own. As far as the hardness goes on that, coral is not super, super hard. Uh, it's going to be approximately about five on the hardness scale. Um, if it ever loses its luster, I know from here, you can send it back. We can rebuff it. That's not a problem whatsoever. But again, if you wear coral jewelry, I should have said this. If you wear perfume, don't put your coral beads on or your pearls that go with the perfume. That perfume has a lot of harsh chemicals. You know you can't get it in your eye. So think of it. If it's going to burn your eye, it's going to burn coral. You know, after all, it was alive. It wasn't organic. So just take it easy with the coral, but you can wear it every day. It's really not a problem whatsoever. And just live in it and enjoy it and have fun wearing coral because I think coral makes you feel good. I think it's something that... Uh, that evokes a lot of fun and it's something that I love to sell because I can give a lot without charging a lot.